In this chapter, we examine how costs behave, and we also introduce what's called the cost volume profit model. Now, the first video in this uh, chapter deals with the first two learning objectives. That is, first of all, we must distinguish between a variable cost and a fixed cost. And we also must bring in the idea of relevant range. It is important for a manager to understand how costs will change if we increase production or if we increase sales. Now, some costs will change. Other costs will not change. Understanding for a manager what will happen to different costs helps a manager plan for the future operations and make decisions between alternative courses of action. So cost behavior analysis, we analyze each cost to determine how that cost will respond to changes in the level of business activity. Some costs can be classified as variable costs. Variable means that they will change and they will change in direct proportion to the change in activity. So if we're talking sales, for example, and we're analyzing a particular cost and how it relates to the sales, if we increase sales 10% and this cost goes up 10%, then we classify this cost as a variable cost. Conversely, if costs go down or if the activity level goes down 25%, then this cost will also go down 25%. It will vary at the same percentage as the changes in the level of activity. However, they will remain the same on a per unit basis. And in the following slide, we'll provide an example. Uh, Damon Company manufactures computers, and one of the items they're looking at is the cost of the camera within the computer. The cost is $10 for every computer. So therefore, if they produce 20,000 units, the cost is going to be 20,000, or 2,000 units, sorry, the cost will be $20,000, $10 per unit. If they increase production five times, from 2,000 to 10,000, the cost goes up from 20,000 to 100,000. So you see this cost is a variable cost. But if you look at it on a unit basis, this is a variable cost per unit now, it still remains $10 per unit. No matter what, how many cameras you produce, it is $10 on a per unit basis. On a graph then, if we're talking total variable costs, then this is the graph. That is, the cost will increase in total, in total, with increases level of activity. But on a unit basis, it remains the same. So keep that in mind. When we say a variable cost is a, a cost that changes in total, in direct proportion to changes in level activity. Contrast that with a fixed cost. A fixed cost does not change in total with changes in the level of activity. It stays the same. Property taxes, insurance, rent, doesn't matter how much the sales are, the rent is going to be the same. The taxes will be the same. The insurance will be the same. But on a per unit basis, the more I produce, the less per unit cost it will decline. For example, Damon leases a production facilities for $10,000 a month. That's the cost, $10,000 a month. It doesn't matter how many. If they produce $2,000, $4,000, $6,000, 8000 Computers, the cost will still be 10000 But if we unitize the cost, if we say, what is the fixed cost per unit? Well, the more units I produce, uh, the less the cost is per unit. If I produce 2,000 units and my rent is 10000 then the cost is $5 per unit. But if I produce, I increase the production from 2,000 to 10000 then the cost goes down to $1 per unit. So you see, as we produce more, the cost comes down. The fixed cost, sorry, per unit comes down. So it's important to understand the difference between fixed and variable, but you must also keep in mind the difference between total fixed and unit fixed, variable fixed, and 
Uh, well, what did I say? Total. <laughs> Never mind. If we were to graph it, then the total fixed costs remain the same, but on a unit basis, it goes down. Now, this uh, idea of relevant range of costs, uh, we're making an assumption here that there is a straight line relationship in a variable cost and a fixed cost, as we did in the graph. But actually, a variable cost will change a little bit because of volume, discounts, and things of that nature. Um, so we understand that it is curlier. And if we were to graph it, then, but the total fixed cost, you see the relevant range within a certain level of activity up to here, the cost will remain the same. But if I go beyond this level of activity, this cost will jump and then remain the same at that level for that period of time or that relevant range. And then it will jump again. So when we talk about fixed and variable costs, we're always assuming that we're within a certain relevant range of activity that we don't go outside of that range. And uh, this, that's known as the relevant range of operations during the year. And that concludes the first video.